So picking up where we left off last time with the FTP tutorial, now we're going to look at um, styling with CSS or cascading style sheets. So the first thing we need to do is open up our FTP client, FileZilla, and then if we go into the uh, site manager, we can use the preset we set up last time to connect quickly using SFTP. Then we'll go into the writable folder, and then opening up the file, which I've already done, uh, excuse me, the folder where we want to store things locally on our machine. I've set up a folder at web as site in the desk on the desktop. Um, go into your own personal student folder, um, and in there will be assignment2.html, which you can drag down to your local desktop. And then if you go and open your CSS folder and open the remote CSS folder, you'll see there's a, a style sheet called style.css, and you can drag that down as well. Um, if you hit the double dot, it'll take you back up one directory, so that's how you get back to here. Um, if you go up one more again, you can see if you take web as site and you can drag that into Sublime Text 2, it'll give you the entire folder with all of your files. Now we're going to open up assign2.html by double clicking. By double clicking. Um, and as you can see, I've taken the uh, blossom that we had uh, nicely formatted in between the pre-tags from assignment one, um, and I put it down here, uh, neglecting the the formatting in the white space, because as we remember from the first assignment or the first exercise, when you put it between two div tags rather than between pre-tags, uh, it doesn't respect the white space formatting. The next thing we want to do is go under CSS and open up our style sheet. Um, and as you can see, it's quite minimal. I'll zoom in. Um, we just have the body, and it is initialized to color black. The font is 16 uh, pixel high type with a line height of 22 pixels. Uh, it's looking first for the font times. If the user doesn't have that installed on the computer, it'll look for Times New Roman. And then finally, if they don't have either of those, it'll default to whatever serif type their browser has set as the main default serif type. Um, finally, it'll align the text to the left. So if we go back to assign to, um, what we want to do here is apply IDs and classes so that we can start to um, apply uh, styling to different parts of the, of the HTML document. So first we're going to open up the browser and see what this file looks like. So since it's already on the server, we can see it. Um, and so we'll go to group1.website.com slash carolina slash assign2 this time dot html. And as you can see, it looks exactly like assignment1 um, as the white space formatting wasn't respected on the bottom. So if we go back to sublime text2, now we can start to add... Um, IDs and classes to our different uh, HTML tags that we can then use as selectors in our CSS document. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go under um, the H1 tag and we'll give it an ID of header. Now if we go into the style.css, um, IDs are uh, understood in, in selector language in CSS by using a hash um, and then giving it the name. So header. Um, inside header then we're going to give it a different color. So we'll give it color uh, red. And the CSS syntax is this. It's the um, attribute uh, followed by a colon and then the value. Um, and then a semicolon to indicate the end of the line. So we'll save that. We'll upload it using FileZilla to the CSS folder. It's going to recognize that there's um, a potential overwrite and we're going to say OK. Then we'll go back and now we have to do the same with assignment 2. So we've added the ID with header. We'll save, go back to FileZilla and upload assignment 2. Now if we come back and refresh the page, we'll see that in fact nothing has changed. Um, the problem is we haven't connected the CSS file to the HTML file. So if we go back to Sublime Text 2 and we go inside the head tags, 
it's here that we'll tell it to first, before starting to parse the body content, uh, to load in an external style sheet that's stored elsewhere. So we do this by using a link tag. Um, we give it an attribute of rel equals style sheet. We then give it a type of text slash CSS. And then finally we give it the href, which is the location uh, on the server of where the CSS file is. So in this case, relative to where the HTML file is stored, it's CS, the folder CSS slash style dot CSS. Um, and then we close the tag. So I'm going to save this and then re-upload to the server. Now if we refresh the page, we should see that the H1 heading with the ID of header is now rendered in red. Now the main difference between CSS IDs and CSS classes is that IDs are meant to be unique on an HTML document, uh, whereas classes can be applied um, multiple times. So if we go back to Sublime Text 2, now in the H2 tag we can give it a class equals blue. Um, and we can do the same for the paragraph tag and give it a class equals blue. I'll save this and then in the style sheet classes are recognized uh, with a period so we'll give it a period and then blue um, and here we're going to do color blue. That was a mistake. Uh, actually I meant to say save. So now we'll go to FileZilla, we'll re-upload Assignment 2, and we'll re-upload style.css. And we should see both uh, the H2, the series of parentheses, and the two ampersands and the copyright symbol rendered in blue. So when I refresh the page, we get them rendered in blue. Uh, one last thing that we'll do is to show the difference between the pre and the div. So with pre there's only a single tag that encapsulates the entire thing. So in this case we'll give it a class equals bg dash or dash blue and here we'll do dot bg dash blue and we'll give it a background color of blue. Notice you can leave a space between the colon or leave it attached um, and it doesn't make a difference. So I will save this, save this, I'll upload uh, style.css, go back up to the top directory and upload assign2.html and now when I refresh the page the background of the blossom is entirely blue. The entire block is blue. The last thing that we're going to do here is come down to the div and we'll give that one a class equals spaced and if we go into style.css we'll go dot spaced and we'll give that a line height of 36 pixels. So we'll save this one we'll save this one save assign to and upload both of them then when we refresh we'll see down here now we've got a lot of spacing between these and so we can do the final um, demonstration which is to show the difference between a div and a span and basically the difference is a div is rendered as a block and a span is rendered in line. And so what that means is if we put, if we wrap any part of this bottom part of uh, text down here in a div, it will insert a carriage return um, before and after the div. So the, the div will be rendered out as its own block. So we'll illustrate that now. I'll put in the div here and uh, we'll close it out here. So this entire part here is a div within this div. So divs can be nested. In fact, that's a common function, a uh, common case for them. So we'll save this, go back to FileZilla, 
upload assign to .html and re-render the website within the browser and as you can see the part that we called out as a div now is there was a carriage return inserted at the end of the line before and again at the end of the line after now just to make that much more clear we'll give this a class equals red go back to our style.css and we'll add a red class giving it the color red just to be really clear we'll underline it so we'll give it border bottom three pixels dashed red um, and then we're gonna do a span uh, just up here so we'll do span class equals blue and we've already defined blue as the color blue and we'll close that one out here and we'll do one more down here span class equals blue and we'll close that tag here with a closing tag. So we'll save this one, we'll save our style.css, we'll upload both using our FTP client, and when we re-render the page you'll see that the span changes the uh, attribute value of the color but it keeps it in line so whereas the div will actually take it out and make it a block and because we've underlined it now you can actually see that the block even though the text only runs for maybe 10 or 15 percent of the width of the page the block actually runs the entire page which is why uh, the, the rest of the text carries on below and so as you can see there's blue here again in line because it was rendered with a span uh, the last thing to remember uh, with this uh, second exercise um, is maybe something that we should have done right at the beginning, which would be to go back and uh, make sure to change the title to Assignment 2. Um, so we'll save that, upload one last time using FileZilla by overwriting the file that's currently there. Um, re-render and then you'll see it change from assignment 1 to assignment 2 in the browser tab. Um, and that's it.